Happy Sunday, y'all. Today's tips, we are going to talk about the process of purchasing a home and the approach that I like to take. This is the Coles Notes version and I will have a longer video coming up soon in my YouTube channel so that you can refer to that for more detailed information. I do have a buyer's guide as well. So if you're interested in receiving that, I can send that on to you. So tip number one, get pre-approved. Uh, if you don't have a mortgage broker, if you have an agent that you're working with already or want to work with, like me, <laughs> uh, we have trusted mortgage brokers in our back pocket. I can't stress enough how good it is to have a relationship with an excellent mortgage broker because they make stuff happen and they'll give you the real deal and not bullshit you in any way. Second to that, once you've been pre-approved, talk to the agent. Um, a good agent such as myself will have you already set up on a search if you're working with them and you'll have a very good idea and understanding of what the market is doing because you need to have a very realistic perspective about what your expectations are as to what you can afford. It's great if you want to live in a million dollar house, but if you can only afford 750000 you ain't getting the million dollar house. So have the agent set up a um, matrix uh, email for you go over everything start your search go out and look at houses i find it generally takes about three times um, and i will jam in a lot of houses and do a lot of talking to you while we're going through the houses so you have an expectation of neighborhoods what you can afford nothing is better than seeing it for real in person because that puts everything into perspective in real time. Second to that, when you find a house that you like, go back and revisit it again. We're in a market right now where we have the time to do that, so it's very important. Do the research on the property. Uh, there are lots of things that come up that aren't listed on the listing, so the agent and the client both need to do their research in that department because uh, certain things aren't shown on the listing. Second to that, decide whether or not you want to put in an offer. When you put in an offer, uh, in this particular market again right now, we are able to put in an offer with conditions, uh, which is excellent. I always recommend having a finance clause uh, condition in there, and I always recommend having a home inspection condition in there. It gives you two outs, two opportunities to get out of the deal if you are not satisfied with it. I can explain uh, and will explain in a, a video later on more detailed how this works once the offer we we then present the offer to the listing agent once the offer is accepted or there could perhaps be negotiations back and forth you as as the buyer are expected to put a good faith deposit down which is predetermined um, on the offer so for example uh, some listings will say that the deposit required, the good faith deposit required is $25,000. I truly never recommend putting down a tremendous amount of money because if the deal doesn't go through, it could take up to a week to get that money back. Uh, some I've seen and personally experienced situations where I put a good faith deposit down and didn't get the money back because the sellers didn't feel that they would have to give it back to me. Um, unfortunately, legal costs pretty much equal what the good faith deposit is, so you have to weigh your pros and cons whether or not you want to pursue that legally. Remember, it is a binding contract once you've signed it. It is a binding contract once you've exchanged the good faith deposit, so to get out of that deal is difficult and will cost you money legally. So uh, if they accept the, if you've negotiated back and forth, you've both agreed upon the terms of the contract, uh, you then proceed forward with immediately contacting the mortgage broker. If you're working with an agent such as myself who has the mortgage broker, um, what I do is I immediately send the deal. Actually, when we're writing up an offer or pre-offer, I will send the listing to the mortgage broker and have him take a look at the property as well so he can assess it from his financial perspective as well as the underwriters. So that ball is rolling we literally um, uh, just sorry to backtrack a little bit the good faith deposit has to be delivered to the seller within 24 hours in order for the deal to become firm or well to the next stage which is ensuring if you have conditions in there that they are met 
So generally conditions are five to seven working days. So I like to use a date and not be ambiguous and say five days because that's ridiculous. I like concrete dates and times in place. So we all have a very good understanding of what the expectations are. So deal is accepted. Deposit has been delivered within the 24 hours. We're already moving forward with the mortgage broker and saying, this is the deal. This is what we're looking at. He's doing his job, ensuring that the property is going to meet its appraised value by the bank and that it will um, follow, we can get rid of that condition. And then second to that, I highly recommend the uh, home inspector. So I've already, when we're putting an offer in, if you're working with me, I've already called the home inspector and said, look, we're putting an offer in on this property. What's your availability? so that I can confer this with the listing agent to make your, your offer look the best. That is my job. I have to present the offer to the listing agent. So I want to say, yes, they've been pre-approved. Yes, we've already spoken to the mortgage broker. Yes, I already have the home inspector lined up. These are the sorts of things that um, a lot of new agents don't understand. Even some seasoned agents, they don't do this you really have to jump the second you decide that you want to go onto a property and put an offer in. So let's say the house meets appraisal, the bank says okay, second to that, the home inspector says everything is great, but there's one problem. So again, in this new market that we're in, which is fabulous, let's say the problem is um, there's some issues that need to be addressed. So what we do is we then, I, you and I discuss how do we want to handle this? Do we want to ask for uh, compensation regarding the price that we've already pre-agreed on? Or do we want to have the sellers fix it? Two approaches in that department. I personally always grew, uh, think that the best way to approach it is negotiate a lower price because with the lower price point, then you are in control of fixing the problem and you don't have to rely on the seller fixing the problem because ultimately we don't know how well they fix the potential problem that might have been there. That's just me, call me a little bit OCD and a control freak, but that's the way I like to handle it. So let's say there are no problems and we basically then eliminate the conditions, say conditions have been met, the deal becomes firm and binding. Yay, you own a house. So then what happens, the mortgage broker has already been doing his due diligence. Everything's fine on our end. You need to give notice to wherever you're at if you're renting. Um, this is a straightforward deal. This isn't a situation where you have to sell your house to purchase a property and purchase a property. This is just you going in and buying. First time home buyers generally. Basically from there, book movers, uh, start planning and yeah, I'll own a house. And that's how simple it is when you work with me. I will have a more instructional video showing you the gazillion contracts you're going to have to sign and all of the paperwork, which is very repetitive, uh, all legal, of course. I will also have some instructional videos on how the process works uh, and what it actually all means broken down. But this is the Coles Notes version, and I think it's really important that you understand the process I do have a buyer's guide, which explains the overview of everything. I will say from my years of experience in real estate that every deal is different and unique and there are no two deals that are exactly the same. So things come up that you're not expecting. You have to address them when they do come up. That's where our expertise comes in as seasoned agents that know how to deal with all of this stuff. Uh, and we don't generally uh, get overworked by it. We understand it, it's a process, it's up to us to teach you that process and walk you through step by step. So that's all, have, uh, have a great Sunday and I will have this posted later today so you can um, review the process of purchasing a house. Again, please reach out to me if you want a copy of my buyer's guide. Um, it's helpful, read it. It's not boring, um, it's easy to read, and um, you should all know the process of purchasing your first home. So, love y'all, bye.